You can take a closer look here. This is the outlet section, and here's the main intake. The intake is quite large, and when I Hello everyone! Today, I'm going to build a turbojet engine from scratch. Stay tuned and follow along to see how I design it step by step. For this build, I'm focusing on simplicity and efficiency. Let's see how it turns out. Alright guys, I've got a bunch of things ready right here, and I'm super excited to show you what I've been working on. What you're looking at is a turbojet engine that I've 3D printed myself using PEG filament. It's known for being tough, heat resistant, and overall a solid choice for this kind of project. The parts feel really sturdy in the hand, definitely more durable than your average PLA print. For the fan blades, I decided to stick with plastic ones this time around. They're lightweight, easy to work with, and still get the job done efficiently. Everything has been carefully designed and modeled beforehand the fan blades, the shaft, the casing. I've made sure all the measurements are precise so that everything fits together seamlessly. Now that all the components are ready, I'm going to walk you through the assembly process step by step. Make sure to watch closely, because once this thing is put together, you'll get a good look at how the full setup works and hopefully, it'll run just the way I planned. Take a look at this, guys. Right here, I've got a solid metal rod made from stainless steel. This thing is incredibly durable. You can soak it in salt water or fresh water. No problem at all. It won't rust or corrode thanks to the stainless steel material. And on top of that, it's coated with an extra hard layer of chrome. Just look at it. It's perfectly straight, isn't it? Super clean and precise. Now, I've gone ahead and welded an additional stainless steel section onto one end, and this part is threaded specifically. It's a 10 mm thread. This thread is designed to connect directly to the shaft down here. There's also a small shoulder or flange built in to hold the fan blade securely in place. That's really important when the engine is spinning at high speed. We don't want any chance of the fan blade slipping. And right here is the nut I've modified I've welded to little tabs onto it. These act like locks to keep the fan blade tightly secured, especially during high speed operation. That way, there's no risk of the blade spinning loose or stripping the threads. Safety and stability first. On top of that, I've designed the fan shaft to match the exact thread size of the rod, that means we can't just force it in or glue it like a regular part, you actually need to use a drill to tap the thread directly into the fan hub itself. This allows the shaft and the fan to connect with absolute precision. Once the threads are cut properly, the connection becomes super solid, no wobbling, no looseness, nothing. It's a tight mechanical fit, which is crucial when you're dealing with high-speed rotation. This method might take a little more effort, but it ensures a much more durable and reliable assembly, especially when the engine is spinning at full throttle. For this entire build, I've chosen to use stainless steel for all the critical components. The reason is simple, many of these parts are going to be exposed to water constantly, sometimes even submerged for extended periods. So using stainless steel is absolutely essential to prevent rust and corrosion over time. It not only increases the durability of the engine but also ensures that everything stays strong and reliable, even in harsh, wet conditions. This is especially important for parts like the shaft, bolts, and fan assembly, where any sign of rust could lead to failure or performance issues. And next, I'm going to install the bearing onto the shaft of the turbojet engine body. Since the design is made with a very tight tolerance, almost a perfect press fit, I won't be able to just slide it on by hand. So what I'll do is use a heat gun to warm up the bearing slightly. That'll cause it to expand just enough so I can press it onto the shaft smoothly. Once it cools down, the metal will contract and grip the shaft tightly, creating a super secure and snug fit. This method ensures that the bearing won't come loose during high speed rotation and helps keep the entire assembly running smoothly and precisely. Moving on, I'm going to install an additional bearing at the rear end of the shaft. This bearing helps support the connection between the main fan blade and the rear stator blades, the fixed blades positioned at the back of the engine. Now, these rear stator blades play an important role. They help straighten the flow of water or air coming out of the compression chamber. Without them, the flow would still be swirling due to the rotation from the main fan, which reduces efficiency. By redirecting the flow into a straighter path, the stator blades help generate a much stronger and more focused thrust. So overall, this setup not only improves stability but also increases propulsion efficiency quite a bit. Now I'm going to drill and tap a threaded hole right here. This is where I'll install a small fitting to inject lubricating oil directly into the shaft assembly. 
The design includes not just one, but two bearings, one at the front and one at the rear. Between them, there's a small cavity that acts as a lubrication chamber. By pumping oil into this space, I can both lubricate the bearings and help block water from entering the motor housing. This dual function is super important, especially in water-exposed environments like this, where both friction and moisture are potential issues. A proper oil seal and regular lubrication will keep everything running smoothly and extend the life of the entire turbojet system. Alright guys, and just like that we've finished assembling the turbojet engine. That was pretty quick, right? Now, I know some of you might say this isn't a real turbojet engine, and that's fair, but around here, that's what we call it a turbojet. What do you guys call this type of setup in your area? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how it's referred to in different places. To connect these two parts together securely, I'm using a gasket right here. It's made from a soft and flexible material, which is perfect for sealing surfaces. When I tighten the bolts to join the front and rear sections, the gasket compresses and helps create a much tighter connection between the two. This way, it forms an almost perfectly sealed chamber inside very important for maintaining pressure and preventing any leaks. It's a small detail, but it makes a huge difference in overall performance and reliability. Next, I'm going to install the fan blade, guys, but before that, I'm applying some lubricant. This one's pretty good and works really well for reducing friction and making assembly smoother. It also helps protect the shaft and the threads during high-speed okay, operation. Right. This lubricant is actually okay, quite effective and has a fairly high viscosity. That thickness helps create a strong barrier, which is really useful for preventing water from seeping into the engine chamber along the shaft. It does a great job at both lubricating and sealing really handy for builds like this where water resistance is critical. All right, everyone, so I've just finished building this turbojet engine using 3D printing technology. It actually took quite a bit of time to print because the overall size is pretty large. I'm using a 100mm propeller here, and it's also equipped with a steering nozzle, water gets sucked in from the front intake and exits through the back, everything fits and functions quite nicely. Now let me show you some measurements, the outlet of the steering nozzle is about 80mm in diameter, and yes, it can turn left and right for steering, which gives you directional control. One thing to note this engine doesn't have a reverse nozzle installed, if you want reverse functionality, you can always design and add that separately, for now, I want to test the basic thrust and performance of this build first before moving on to more features. You can take a closer look here this is the outlet section, and here's the main intake, the intake is quite large, and when I mount this engine on the boat, I'll angle it slightly downward. That way, it'll help draw in water more efficiently and generate stronger thrust when running. This type of engine can be mounted on small boats, like mini boats or fishing boats around 2 meters in length give or take. For best performance, I recommend keeping the boat as lightweight as possible. The lighter the boat, the less load the engine has to carry, that means better fuel efficiency and potentially higher speeds. So if you're building your own hull, Try to use lightweight materials wherever you can, it'll make a big difference. One very important thing to keep in mind, guys, the inside of the turbojet engine has to be sealed really tightly. If there are any leaks, it won't be able to build up enough pressure to generate strong thrust and the boat just won't move efficiently. Now, the fan housing starts at around 110 millimeters in diameter, and then it narrows down to about 80 millimeters at the exhaust end. That compression helps build up higher pressure, which gives us more powerful thrust at the output. The engine's RPM also plays a huge role in how effective the thrust will be. If you use a motor with too low of an RPM, it won't create enough force to push the boat forward properly. Ideally, you want something in the range of 5,000 to 10,000 revolutions per minute for this setup. But here's one thing I'm a bit concerned about the fan blades I'm using are made of plastic. At very high speeds, there's a risk they could crack or even shatter. So I recommend swapping them out for aluminum or metal blades if you plan to run this at full power for extended periods. It'll be much more durable and reliable in the long run.